Good morning, friends. Welcome to East Dallas Christian Church. We are so thankful that you are here to worship with us today on this beautiful after Easter day. It is also a great day because it is our after Easter Easter pageant. Uh, we are very thankful to all of the adults and children who helped make this possible. And that'll happen during the sermon time, and we are so excited to share that with you. Uh, today, you may also note that Keith and some of our musicians are not logged on. They are spending the morning recording uh, music for the next couple of weeks for us. So they are in their own sort of worship service uh, at the sanctuary preparing for all of those things. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship together, to sing together, to pray together, and to continue to remember the holy story of Jesus's resurrection. Let us worship God. It's gone now. No, it's gone. Let us join together in a word of prayer. We do come rejoicing. We do come singing, Lord, into your presence this day, celebrating the chance to reconnect with you and one another, to be reminded of the eternal story of Easter, and to hear again from your holy word, the guide that leads us through our days. We give thanks for the gift of Jesus, his life, his death, and especially his resurrection in our world. As we remember the prayer that he taught us to pray by saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forevermore. Amen. 
Our scripture for today comes from Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, and to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. My friends, this is the, the verse that grounds our scripture or our pageant today that helps us see the continuation of our Easter story. As I said before, this is a pageant presented to us not just by our children and youth, but this time some of our adults joined us. So let us continue worship by watching together this pageant of the Easter story. bad news. What happened now? Fires, lawsuits, arrests, climate change. That's a lot. There's a lot of problems. Is the news always bad? Yeah, it kind of feels like that, doesn't it? Yeah, is there ever good news? Oh, yeah. Yeah, good things happen all the time in our family, in our community, in our area, but sometimes it just feels like nothing good is happening anywhere. But that's when I think about it. Jesus, right? That's right. How did you know what I was thinking? The Jesus story wasn't all good news, was it? No, you're right. Jesus faced a lot of bad news, but his story is about good news overcoming bad news. What was Jesus' good news? The Sermon on the Mount? I learned about that in Sunday school. That's a great place to start. Uh, Jesus went up to the mountainside and shared his story with a lot of people who came to listen. It's like a sermon. Sermons are boring. Well, it wasn't for the people who came to listen to Jesus. They really felt what he said, and they used his sermons to go out and live the scripture in their lives. Uh, Jesus wanted everyone to understand, even the people who were poor or lonely or sick, that they could have the kingdom of God too. Jesus wanted them to understand that his kingdom was different than man-made kingdoms or governments here on earth. That does sound like good news. Tell us more, Jesus. Tell us the kingdom of kingdom. How do we get into this kingdom? Empty. Is it an invitation only? Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Oh, ask for what exactly. And where do we knock? Is there a big door? Ask when God gives us things. I'm a puppy. I need a new tunic. I need a new dress. And a camel. I got my, my size. Does God know my size? All these things God's giving us. Behind the door. Alright, let me ask you this. If you were a parent, and your child asks you for a piece of bread, how many of you would give them a stone? Or, better yet, if they ask for a fish, would you give them a snake? What? No. Well, that's just me. Exactly. You know how to give good gifts. So imagine how God's gifts will be to those who ask. Oh, I see what you did there. Nuts, nuts. God loves you. Just like a loving parent, God's kingdom is a kingdom of love. Share that love in everything you do. Treat others as you would want to be treated. 
That is the kingdom of God. That's a good goal. So wise. So wise. I was in this guy forever. Okay, now let me tell you about the narrow gate and the wide gate. Wait, there's a gate now? You know, the Sermon on the Mount is one of my favorite Bible passages. Does anything else happen? Yeah, Jesus taught people a lot. That, more talking, that seems kind of boring, like boring news. Well, that, that can be true, but good news isn't really good news if it's all talk. Sometimes people talk too much. That's very true. How's your sparkling water? Good, how's your coffee? I'm all out. You should have some of this. It does look good. It's really good. Hey, can you think of a time when Jesus not only said something good, but did something good? Um, he was nice to Mary Magdalene whenever, when everybody else was mean to her. That's a good one. Or Zacchaeus. Nobody likes Zacchaeus. And Jesus came over and ate at his house. That was a big deal. It was. Or when the grown-ups wanted the kids to leave Jesus alone, and Jesus was like, kids, get over here, and gave them all hugs and candy. Well, maybe not the candy. Oh, uh, what about when Jesus fed five gazillion, gazillion hungry people? Oh, the feeding of the thousands? Yeah. That's a really great example. Uh, Jesus fed all these people even when his own disciples thought there wasn't enough food. Food is good news. Food is good news. You are healed. I am. I am. Thank you, Jesus. All right, all right. I think that was the last one. Thank you. Are you sure? Jesus, we're in the middle of nowhere and it's getting late. We should send the crowd away so they can go get themselves food in the village. Why would we send them away? Just give them something to eat. Right. Uh, we only have five loaves and two fish. What's the problem? Well, mathematically speaking, there's thousands of people, Jesus. We could possibly bring the food to me. Please, everyone, come sit on the grass. Dear God, thank you for this bread and for this fish. You are a loving God who gives us good gifts. Amen. All right, we've got a little bit of food here. Everyone needs to share. Yeah, please don't take too much. There's only so much to go around. That's it. Pass it around. Don't spill it. Who still needs some? There's even more over here. Oh yeah, here's a whole lot more over here too. Who hasn't had any? Have you already had some? One second. Here, take some more. Here's some more. Here's some more. Everyone says they're full. They're all full. But where did... But how did... I think we've just seen a miracle. Wow, Jesus is like a good news machine. Totally. Good news for everybody. Well... What? Not everybody saw it that way. But you said Jesus is all about good news. Well, he was, but sometimes good news for some is bad news for others. When Jesus told the people who didn't have a lot of power that they were blessed, uh, that made religious leaders, kings, and even the emperor angry and fearful. They were scared Jesus' message would make them lose their power. And they didn't want that. No, they did not. That happens a lot. Where do you see that happen? Well, when people think they're better and more important than others, it makes them feel powerful, in control, like a bully. But power isn't the most important thing, is it? Nope, love is. You know it. Jesus lived a life of love for the people, teaching and showing that God loved them no matter who they were. And that's why people in power made a plan to arrest Jesus the same night he and his disciples were having a special meal. Oh, yeah, yeah, front night, we better get down, get down. Oh, Bartholomew, I love when you sing. You more lamb? I believe I will. Who needs more bread? Go along, James. Thank you, James. <laughs> Can I have anything? Uh, yes, please. 
Here you go, Judith. Teacher, would you tell us that funny story again? The one about your parents losing you for three days. <laughs> I love that one. Where have you been? We were worried sick. And then we said, Where else would I be with my father's house? I do love that story. But tonight, I do need to talk to you guys about something serious. This meal is more special than you know. I need you here because soon I will suffer greatly. God, thank you for this cup of wine. Take this cup and take a drink, each of you. I am not going to drink again until the kingdom of God comes. God, thank you for this gift of bread. This is my body given to you. Do this to remember me. This cup poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Friends, I always knew I was going to suffer. No one can change that. And one of you is going to betray me. I would never, nor me. No way, I'm your number one fan. No. I'm his number one fan. You know that, John. He loves Peter more than you, Matthew. You will all desert me. You will all scatter and hide at the time of my suffering. But I have prayed that your faith will not fail you. You will come back together and serve to strengthen me. Jesus, you know that I would go to jail for you. I would die for you. Peter. Before the sun rises tomorrow, you will pretend not to know me three times. These are difficult times. Come, put on your sandals. Let us go someplace where we can pray. I'm going to go pray alone. Stay here and pray with me. Yes, teacher. Of course, Jesus. Father, take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I know it is not what I want, but what you want. Why are you sleeping? Come, stand up and pray with me. Let us face these hard times. Look, it's Judas! He's come with armed men! They come here with their weapons drawn as if I was an armed robber. I was with the people day after day in the temple, and they did not lay a hand on me. But they are going to do what they are going to do. This is troubling times. This is the time of suffering. Did they arrest him? He didn't even do anything wrong. He was innocent, but that didn't matter to the people in power. Why? People of power don't often want their world to change. So Jesus' message of love and justice was changing everything, and people wanted to silence him. Talk about bad news. Bad news for Jesus and all of his followers. When Jesus was arrested, many of his disciples ran away and hid. I would too. I would hide under my bed. Uh, bad news can be hard to face, especially when it's scary bad. But the power people didn't win, did they? What do you think? They did kill Jesus, but first they tried to embarrass and hurt him. Yes, they did. And then they killed him. They did. It's a sad, horrible story. That's the worst news. It really was. But it wasn't the end, was it? Nope. There was good news to come. Huge good news. Easter news. Yeah. Do you know who were the very first preachers of that good Easter news? Women. Of course they were. Which ones? We're not sure who all was there, but we know it was a group of women who went out to visit the tomb where Jesus' body was buried. 
Joanna, I have not stopped crying for two days. I miss him so much. How can he be gone? Our beloved teacher and friend. Remember when he healed, he healed my son's hand on the Sabbath? Or when he stood up to the religious leaders accusing me of sin? He was always there for us, serving everyone and challenging everyone. <laughs> oh, he never let you off the hook, that's for sure. Remember the scripture you read in the temple? God sent me to release the captives. Remember the people in charge did it like that. No, they didn't. And they took him away from us. Look at the tomb, the stone they removed. Somebody has stolen his body. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. What? Jesus has risen. No way! Yes way. You can't be serious. Did you miss our super glittery outfits? It doesn't get more serious than this. Remember what Jesus said in Galilee? He said he would be killed and then rise again on the third day. He did? He totally did. Go tell the other disciples that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. This is actually happening? This is incredible. This is, is such Jesus. Come on, we have to go tell the others. Right. They'll never believe us. It doesn't matter. God wants us to share the good news with everyone, whether they believe us or not. Hallelujah, sister. Let's go. So, did anybody believe the woman? Well, not at first. Their news seemed too good to be true. The other disciples eventually figured it out. They had to see the tomb for themselves. That's right. And later on, Jesus even appeared to many of them. He was risen. The disciples began to realize that Jesus saved his biggest news for last. That would be super good news. The good news that death, the biggest, baddest news, doesn't have the last word. That there is new life, hope, and possibility in the power of the resurrection. How come there's still bad news? Like, a lot. Well, there's always bad news, and sometimes, like the disciples, we feel like hiding and giving up. But after Jesus' resurrection, his disciples stopped hiding. They went out and continued his ministry. They reached out to all kinds of people who were used to hearing only bad news, and they taught them about love and forgiveness and acceptance of others. They cared for the sick, fed the poor, visited people in prison, and shared everything they had. They weren't just telling the good news of Jesus, they lived it. They did all of that? They did. And you know what? What? It's good news for you and me too, because we can also live and share the good news of Jesus today. Followers of Jesus still bring good news to ourselves, our families, our friends, and our neighbors. Our church congregation follows in the ways of Jesus when we collect donations, welcome our unhoused neighbors, and advocate for justice for those who have been oppressed or excluded. When we do these things, we are responding to Jesus' call to live out the scripture of Luke 4. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because God has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. God has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. When the bad news of our world feels overwhelming, we can reach out to one another, support and strengthen each other, and remind each other that the message of Jesus lives on in us and through us. That's the best news. And you know, if you're ever feeling discouraged by bad news, I want you to come to me and I'll remind you of the good news Jesus is still bringing in the world. And if you forget, I'll remind you. You always do. We all need to be reminded there is good news. Every day.
We know there is good news every day, don't we, friends? I am so thankful for all the children and adults, and especially as you saw on that last scene card, the videographers who helped make this possible. Um, now it is time for us to move into a time of prayer, knowing that God brings us good news through Jesus Christ and sustains us through the Holy Spirit. And as I say often on our Wednesday worships for the children, that God loves to hear from us. God loves to talk to us, to be in relationship with us. So let us take our hearts and minds to our God in prayer. Lord, Sometimes it seems like there is no good news, that the world is full of anger, separation, strife, pain, hunger, isolation. We feel overwhelmed looking at the news and at our social media feeds. Everywhere we look, it seems as if there is another shooting, another act of senseless violence. There is pain because we don't see that God made us all different for a reason that our differences make us stronger, better. We see children alone, parents hoping they will find a better life than the one they were born into. Children, families, individuals, abandoning all that they've ever known for the hope of safety in a foreign land. We see the devastation caused by nature, tornadoes ripping through communities, stripping them of homes and livelihoods. The earth erupting with ash and fire to scatter those who had set roots on its island. In our own homes, we face insecurity about our finances, our health, our relationships. But even when the world feels full of bad news, we know there is still good news. Good news in Christ's love for us. Good news in the resurrection. Good news in the work of God's hands lived out through each one of us. In scripture and in life, we hear that God comes to us again and again. God comes to comfort and sustain. God comes to challenge us to do the same for others. In the beginning, God sent angels and prophets to show us the way, to teach us, remind us, guide us, correct us. Then God sent Jesus to live with us and show us tangibly how to proclaim the good news, to set prisoners free and allow all to be fully human. And now we have the Holy Spirit to guide our hearts, to remind us all of that has been taught before, to give us strength to be and to show the good news. We remember today that we are agents of good news. We are to look at the world around us and remember that God promises hope, salvation, redemption, and wholeness. Bad news is never the end, for there is good news for all who love and hope, and do. Amen.
and praise his holy name we do. Friends, it is now time to gather together your communion elements so that we may partake together after our elders lead us through the meditation and time of prayer. Are we on? You are, go right ahead. Thank you. At this time, we'll observe the service of communion it was instituted by Jesus on the very night he was betrayed. The invitation comes directly from him and all persons who have accepted him as their Lord and Savior are invited to join us. We have heard his instructions, which have been so beautifully told in the pageant, which we have just seen. But before we start, let's take a quick look at an old Christian hymn. Its title is Just As I Am was written in 1835. Billy Graham heard it in 1934 and decided to pick it up and use it as a part of his new ministry. Many of you who are hearing this word may have heard this as children. You listened to his call in the 1900s to join the faith. The fifth verse of the hymn summarizes its message very well with these words. Just as I am, Thy love unknown has broken every barrier down. Now to be thine, yea, thine alone, O Lamb of God, I come. May you now bow your heads as the elders lead us in prayer for the loaf and for the cup. Let us pray. Gracious creator and loving God, we gather around our tables in our homes to give thanks that you come to us again and again through the breaking of this bread. We remember you and the good news you anointed Jesus to bring in the midst of a troubled and conflicted world. We pray that we can celebrate this good news again as your spirit lives in each of us. Come, O Lord, to the poor among us, the captives, the blind, and the oppressed. Free us all to live and proclaim this love today in needy places and for all of your oppressed people. Hear our prayer. God of light and love, we have found your truth in Jesus Christ, and it has set us free. As we bless this cup in remembrance of Christ's blood poured out for us on Calvary's cross, enlighten us by your spirit this morning and see again how he could not be defeated and how his message of reconciling love could not be silenced. Move us from the contest of Good Friday to the vindication of Easter Sunday and help us to have the assurance of faith in our hearts and the confidence in your truth in our minds. Focused on Jesus Christ, who is the truth. Amen.
do this in remembrance. And we have been helped to remember, haven't we, today, the gift of Jesus Christ in all of us as we have lifted up our hearts with the joy of our children. We're so grateful for the gifts that our children bring to us uh, and their parents with a fresh word from our God. Thank you. So there are so many ways that we can give, but if, if your life has been touched by this fresh new way of hearing Jesus's invitation to you to follow him and receive new life, you're invited to call Allison and or I and and we can share with you how to become a part of our congregation, our family of faith that gets to share this great Easter life together. We also share our time with each other in a variety of ways. Tomorrow night, our book club will be meeting both in person in the disciples room and on Zoom simultaneously. So I invite any of you who would like to come and discuss Carolyn Brown's book, The Blue Ribbon Jalapeno Society, to join us tomorrow night. Tuesday, we will be getting together again, elders on Zoom or in the disciples room at eight o'clock for our prayer time. And then Wednesday, Bible study at 10 o'clock. And because we had so many people show up to Bible study on, on Wednesday this last week, we're going to move it to the Great Hall so we can be so safely socially distant. So looking forward to that. Upcoming events in May. I want you all just to be thinking ahead to times we will be getting together for fun and family time safely. First on May 1st, our church life committee is going to, uh, weather permitting, have our second bingo family, church family bingo night in the parking lot or on the, on the EDCC playground from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. We had so much fun at our last bingo party. Um, everybody's welcome to come and we will uh, provide a socially distanced safe way to have fun with one another, just see one another. I am giving you notice that on May 2nd, we will be having a congregational meeting right after the worship service. So if you put that on your calendar, that's a very important meeting in the life of our congregation. On May 15th, we're gonna try it this year going up. We've been invited to go to Miles Ranch again for a day long all church retreat. And Mary Jean is looking forward to having us up there again. And as all of you know, there's plenty of places to hang out and be socially distanced outside on their beautiful property. So we're looking forward to that. Thank you, Mary Jean. Appreciate that every year. Another way we can give is to support our church and its broader mission. The Easter offering is an important part of, of sharing with our broader ministries, such as our Office of General Minister and President, the uh, Division of Homeland Ministries, our Board of Church Extension, a lot of different ministries that provide care and, and touch from us to other churches around the country that we don't uh, otherwise would not have an, a, an opportunity to share God's good news. And then of course, ways to give to our church, such a variety of ways. And we give thanks again for the way that your generous hearts have made a difference. There are so many ways that we give. We are grateful for the opportunity to give. It makes a difference in our hearts as well as in the world. And now let us go to our time of benediction. We're so glad that all of you joined us today in worship, especially to hear our children and their families. We hope that you carry forth out into the world um, all praises, all blessings flowing from us and outward. And then I also invite those of you who want to stay and share in an open prayer time afterwards to do so. Let us go to our benediction.